What's going on? It's your boy Braylon B. Man Jones back again for another episode of Brilliant Views. I have a very, very, very special guest with me today in the building. My boy, Mr. Michael Moore. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Feeling great on this Sunday, man. Feeling great. Good, good. Now you just released um, your album, Divergent. I see you got your your, your merchandise on and everything. Promoting as always, man. It's good to have you in the building today, bro. Man, check it. So we gonna jump right into it, bro. Why did you go with the name Divergent for your album? Yeah, man. The word Divergent, man, it means different. It literally means unconventional. You feel what I'm saying? And I always felt different my whole life, even as a little kid. You know, mm -hmm. I never felt like uh, I needed to follow the crowd or have validation from other people. You dig what I'm saying? Dig, so, dig. you know, whether you know whether it's in your school. You know what I'm saying? Your job, your community, whatever you do, man, and wherever you at, I really feel like it's important to be different. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, bro. And you and you even talked about that in your album, man. I, I listened to it. I gave it a, a, a good list. First of all, it's amazing. But uh, in, in Dangerous, you talked about about not label, labeling yourself as an artist, as a West Coast artist, East Coast artist, a rapper, or a yeah. Christian artist. Like, what, like... What, what made you say that? Because, you know, nowadays, people, they love labels. I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. But you like, man, I'm just I'm just a man. I'm a Christian, but this is this is who I am. So right. what's the importance of letting yourself just be who you are and not giving yourself labels? Yeah, man, that question is really a double-edged sword because, you know, if people label my music um, as a as gospel rap or as Christian rap, and as someone who doesn't identify with that, would think, oh, well, either it's corny or either it's lame, or maybe the, the musicality is not there, and maybe he's just rapping a whole bunch of words, but the music isn't on a high level, you know what I'm saying? Or on the flip side, you feel me, where, you know, someone who is from the church and hears gospel rap or Christian rap, oh, they're thinking, I'm just about to be listening to this Jesus music, you know what I'm saying? And just name dropping the name of Jesus mm -hmm. um, all the time, and it's like, no, you know, like, you know, no substance. Yeah, you feel you know I me? Mean? It's going to be substance, and it's going to be something that everyone can vibe to. Exactly. So I feel like that's the importance of not giving it a label. You know what I'm saying? I just want you to see me for my humanity and for my experiences, exactly. not for my labels, because this ain't ideals I'm, I'm spitting. This is my experience. You feel me? So I, I feel you, bro. Cause you, so. man, the whole thing is just experiences, bro. You can see it different different perspectives and things of that sort, bro. And then with like glitter, glitter and gold. First of all, the video was amazing. Ah, uh, like, it was good vibes. <laughs> like that was one of the first on ones video, you dropped, bro. bro. I was like, "Dang, bro, it's how you coming, okay?" Yeah, we were ready. <laughs> Shout we out ready, to my boy Trammel, man. Trammel, man. He he's a, he's a YouTuber out in uh, Anderson, South Carolina. Right. But yeah, man, he did his thing on the video shooting it. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Trammel, for sure. Did you did you release that one first on purpose, or was it like was it? I know it's planned, but what was the purpose of releasing Glitters and Gold? Uh, like first that was definitely on purpose bro because you know the whole premise of glitter and gold is saying like you know people thought i was just the cool kid in middle school and high school this and that but you ain't see the struggles nah. you know what i'm saying everything that glittered you know you thought it was glitter in my life but nah man you know there were some things that really weren't gold mm -hmm. you feel what i'm saying my you know had some situations with my step pops okay. and my step siblings had some situations where you know my biological pops were in there you know what i'm saying i went through you know what I'm saying? Struggles, you mm -hmm. feel me? So Trust, everything that glitter ain't gold, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, you people back then saw the popularity, but you ain't see the struggle. All right. You feel what I'm saying? So I wanted everybody to really feel my humanity on this one. And, you know, I even got lines in there where I'm talking about like, hey, you know, uh, I grew up on Frankie Bell, Soul Train, and some Tupac. <laughs> yeah. You know, I once lusted after the Maseratis and Bugattis. Girls would have bodies and wondering who was an Illuminati. So, you know what I'm saying? Just like really giving them a, a feel of, who, who is Michael Moore? Who is Michael Moore? Because I, I never want to be labeled by a song. Mm -hmm. I want people to know me for me. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like one of my favorite artists, Six Black. Uh -huh. Or he really just go by Black. Black, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. on his album, uh, Free Black, that dropped. Mm -hmm. You know, he was talking about like, you know, everybody was trying to push him to do a, song, a, a, a certain, certain way. type of and song. Like, if I do it that way, I'm going to have to keep doing it and doing it and doing exactly. it. Exactly. So yeah. it's like, nah, man, I want people to really, you know, see what I stand for. I got you, bro. You, so, yeah. bro. You, man, listen. First, and then the song Struggle. Struggle is real. Struggle is real. And I was listening. First of all, I'm going I'm to give y'all a little background. But <laughs> y'all make sure y'all go cop that album, man. It's definitely an amazing album. But as far as the structure of the song, from my perspective, just let me know if I'm right or wrong. But um, that first verse, 
it was that kid in class who 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 is who is deemed, I guess you could say, um, uh, uneducatable, mm-hmm. um, not you know, not easy to teach. Yep. He's a he's a problem child. He's this. He's that. But you see this student, but you like you said, you don't see what's going on at home, and you're just breaking down how he feels like being here in this school is really not helping him. It's really not teaching him because he got a whole nother real world to go on at home because the struggle is real out here, bro. Yeah, so, so yeah. and then with you being a teacher, mm. <laughs> see what I'm saying? with you being a teacher, what was <laughs> what was the what, why why did you feel like it was necessary to show that? Because I, honestly, bro. When I was growing up, sometimes I did feel these feelings. Like I can't lie, like my my life wasn't as 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 uh bad as some of the situations he was speaking on. Mm-hmm. But these are definitely some feelings that a lot of young African American males, females, and just people in general have as far as towards education. They feel like, you know, y'all ain't teach me nothing to go out here and really fight this world that we fighting out here, bro. So what was the importance of making sure you you, you shine some light on that and I, show people what's I, I, really I can really, going on out here. Yeah man, I can speak to the importance of that as a teacher and as a student back then. Because as a teacher now, I think that because I'm twenty four and I'm a young black man my kids that see me, whether white or black, mm-hmm. they realize that an African-American can be educated. Yes. They can be in a position of leadership. Yes. And that's normal. You know what I'm saying? This is our humanity. We're not lower than, we're not less than. Mm-hmm. We're not inferior. You dig what I'm saying? And so to really relate that, I remember being in elementary school, you dig? Mm-hmm. And I remember in third grade having the thought. I was like, okay, the cafeteria ladies, they look like me. Right. Yeah. The janitors. You dig what I'm saying? They look like me. The bus drivers, okay. Mm -hmm. And guy hit me in in the third grade, like, this ain't normal, bro. Yeah. Like, the teachers don't. You know what I'm saying? The superintendents, the principals don't. My classmates don't. (laughs) You dig what I'm saying? (laughs) So, yeah, like, I was just like, but, you know, that was just me. But, and I've always been divergent, as I was saying. But think about how many people aren't divergent Mm -hmm. and how many kids took that as the norm. And how many black kids internalize that as, oh, well, that's I'm all supposed man. to be less than. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That That's not for me. Right. When really, in actuality, nah, man, anything it's is for, for you. you. Right. Whatever you've been put on this earth to do, you dig what I'm saying? It's for you. You know, exactly. we don't just got to be only rappers. We don't just got to only be ball players. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, whatever we want to be. Limitless. We would all be dreamers. Boom. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> this is what I told you. I listened to the album and I enjoyed it, bro. We can all be dreamers, man. Yeah. <sighs> man, you, I'm telling you, like, speak on dreamers a little bit, man. Just, just speak on it, man. I know you got, I know you got it for me, man. But dreamers, cause I, I, I listened to it this morning on the way to church. Right? Yeah. Gosh, bro, yeah. this is real inspiration. This is something that the younger generations need to definitely hear, cause yeah. like, it's a lot of. There's a lot of things. They see and hear a lot of things. And they're getting stuff, information stuff quicker than we did when we were growing up. Right. And sometimes it's hard to, I guess you say, filter what they're getting and how and how they really see the world. And then with dreamers, me talking about different dreams and different things that people see and are, are, are wanting in life. And like, just speak on that for me a little bit. Uh, I mean, first of all, the song starts off catching your attention because it's like... Mr. Dreamer. Miss Achiever. Mr. Believer, Miss Go Getter. This one right here to the businessman and to the average hardworking man. Stay humble, remember you were equal. A servant leader, not above the people. So I'm like identifying, like, hey, if you got this dream and it's really burning inside of you, like, this is who I'm speaking to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so that's just really how it gets to the jump. And honestly, uh, this one, this song is a little sleeper. Because mm-hmm. if you hear it the first time, you're like, okay, it's Boom Bap, it's New York. Mm-hmm. But you go back and listen to the lyrics. I, I'm, I, I really made, I really took my time in the studio and made sure I was on almost like a, a Kendrick Lamar grit, grind, right. toughness in my voice okay. with this one. Because it's really encouraging people, you know, to not give up. You know, it's encouraging people to follow that dream. Mm-hmm. And then it's even encouraging people what to do. As you're following that dream, like, you know, we I talked about this dream. line where it's like uh, hyenas in the distance, yes. laughing at the mission. Snakes, Snakes in are the in the grass, trying to split the difference. <laughs> Got foxes in ditches, uh-huh. trying to swipe the vision. Uh-huh. But you've been through the jungle, drink living water replenished. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... <laughs> they ain't even catch that. They ain't even catch that. They ain't even catch it. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, exactly. Straight but it's up. talking about how you got all the different things coming against you, but you still can be divergent and do your thing the way you want to do it, bro. Thanks, bro. bro. I'm telling you, I enjoy this album, man. And 
<laughs> man, you you talked about so much in the album, bro. I was, <laughs> when you were making this album, mm-hmm. you were coming up with these different songs, these different these different concepts. Yeah. Who were you? Like I know you're speaking to the dreamers, but if you were like, man, who who were you actually trying to speak to? Like your students? Like what? I guess what age group? But what what people were you were you reaching to? Well, I mean, the first line starts off really saying this one right here to the businessman mm-hmm. and to the average hard working man. Mm-hmm. Stay humble. Remember, you are equal, a servant leader, not above the people. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that speaks to the entrepreneur, the one that's like a young adult. You dig what I'm our saying? Generation. Boom, <laughs> our generation, you dig. And then um, it starts off uh, the second kind of uh, blend in is like on your mind of school loans, scholarships and business loans. Mm-hmm. Get out your iPhone, take a picture of milestones, high school graduation or a college degree, business occupation, starting a family. Yes. So it kind of like speaks to that progression right, uh, from right. college to young adult, you know what I'm saying, family. to work, to family. Exactly. And so, I mean, yeah. it's it, kind of diverse. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you've been pushing for like a whole month. Like, yes. you've been pushing, like you went to, what was it, Miami? And Bro, let me t- <laughs> go ahead and speak on it because I... Cause I hit the vote. I voted. I voted. And when you went, I'm like, we really going? Let's go. Yes. I voted, man. So with this whole tour, like you pushing, like you, you, like in my opinion, you're like a preacher, like a like a traveling preacher, but you're speaking, <laughs> like, you're speaking like for real, man. Cause yeah. I, I've always yeah. had a sense of, I've always felt like everybody, we're all here. First of all, I'll put here to. To have our purpose. Yeah. Well, our purpose in the end is really to show that whatever we did, it was bringing honor back to God. That's what sure. I mean. But you, you traveled with your with your album, bro. And how was that? How was being going on tour before it even dropped? Like you, you're on the tour, but you only, you go on iTunes before Saturday. You had one song. <laughs> <laughs> so how was that, bro? We're just being like, listen, this is this is how this is how I'm coming. Yeah. But I need y'all to be ready for when I drop. Like how was that? Man, it was so humbling, bro. Because you know, um, it was it was it was Miami live in my in uh, South Beach, Miami, Florida. You dig what I'm saying? And uh, so it's just a venue, you know what I'm saying? Where a lot of artists, a lot of artists were there. And so just to give you the kind of vibe of who was in the in the building, you know, I met a dude from North Carolina okay. by the name of Chronic Six Six Six. So, you know, it was just like, it was that environment, you know, people was getting, you know what I'm saying, turned up, turned up high, yeah. you had the VIP people in that drunk, you know what I'm saying, and right. then they see me walking here with Divergent on, yeah. and they like, okay, who is this, you know what I'm saying, All right. and then I get on stage, and you know, I, it was really a Divergent message, I'm the only one in there, not rapping about, you know what I'm saying, power, money, Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, ladies, all, the, all that, you, you know, know the, reg- I was, reg- the regular narrative. Right? Yeah. But I could tell that there was a mind shift that happened. There was a paradigm shift that really happened in the in the room because it was like, this bro really spitting. Mm-hmm. And pause. The music is really on a high level. Mm-hmm. And another pause. He even put thought into the performance mm-hmm. and how he was going to get the crowd involved. Okay. You know what I'm saying? With the songs, like, you know, I broke it up into three sections. Left side, you know what I'm saying? Middle, right side, you know, like hands up, you know, everybody one finger up, you know, to the sky. Uh-huh. You know, really thinking about how to get the crowd involved as well with the vibe. And so, like, I got a lot of dap ups and a lot of love after the show. Oh, you. you know what I'm saying? Just off of some, like, dang, bro. Like, you can't, like, like we didn't game. know. We wasn't expecting that. I got you. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and big shout out to, a lot of family that even came. Like okay. Carolina was in there strong. Right. You know what I'm saying? My girl Sarah was in the building. Okay. My mom's, my my dad. Um, I even had a, a cousin and an auntie that lived in Florida. Came through. You know what I'm saying? Came right. through the support. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? As well as uh, one of my bass guitar players uh, at my church, uh, Scotty, and his wife and his daughter, they even came up. Or so massive. like the love in the building was amazing as well. So yeah, it was lit, bro. So the so now on the 29th, that we can expect the same people in the building. Yeah. I'm ready for that, bro. Bro. I'm ready for that. I'm ready. Like 20, like speak on that. Speak on that. Speak on that concert you got coming up. Go ahead, speak on it. Yeah, man. So we got the Divergent album concert, man, and uh sponsored by my business, Michael Moore Enterprises LLC. And it will be in Anderson, South Carolina, inside of the Anderson Mall, specifically at Rejuvenate Church. And yeah, man, you can go and get your tickets on Eventbrite. Uh, use the promo code Divergent and you will get 20% off tickets full price at the door. We're going to have some special guests in the building and we're going to have some people, some entrepreneurs, young adult entrepreneurs in there. Because the whole theme is God is taking the spirit of entrepreneurship, putting it on the youth, mm-hmm. right? And allowing their dreams to become their livelihood. So. 
Yeah, man. That's it's real. It's powerful. And let yeah. people know how much, because sometimes people hear tickets, they think $30, $40. Let them know how affordable it is to come get this message of being divergent and being an entrepreneur and doing what you do and uh, and just being you, man. Let them know the, the price, because I was shocked when you told me. Go ahead. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> it's, it's literally, first of all, you know, it's going to it's, it's gonna be high quality. I put so much time and effort and money into the, the actual concert, but... Um, because I'm doing it for the people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's only going to be $5. Five, well, well, huh? Five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Five dollars for long. <laughs> for real. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man. And with the Divergent, uh, with the promo code Divergent, yeah. it's really only going to be about three. Three dollars, bro. Right. Like, bro <laughs> listen, I'm going to tell you, all right, this is how we're going to rock this. This is how we're going to rock this, bro. For sure. For people that comment on this video, you will be going to the concert free on me. I'm gonna pay for your ticket, bro. Cause I support the movement, bro. That's I still right. gotta get the merch. You got the hat, the hoodie, the t-shirt. Hey. You got everything, <laughs> bro. I, I appreciate it, man. And, yeah. and keep doing your thing, bro. It's it's amazing. It's it's it's, it's refreshing mm. to see somebody of my age, my color, my same mindset. I really being about what they are saying they're about, bro. And I just I just want to let you know, man. Keep doing your thing. Keep driving, man. This is really just the beginning, bro. Mm. All right. You feel me? Thank you for coming through, bro. Listen, tell the people Instagram, Twitter, your 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 um your website, all that. Let them all know everything they need to go to to get everything. Michael Moore, <laughs> I've been calling him, <laughs> I've been calling this man Michael Moore for like three months now, ever since I met him. But let them know, bro, how to how to contact you and how to keep following the movement. Bro. Man, that's real, man. So all social media, that's Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Michael Moore LLC. And that's my first name is M Y K A L, a divergent spelling. I'm about to say your mom was divergent with the spelling. Hey, you feel me? Mom's was, but, <laughs> yeah. I was destined. You feel me? And then so you can also go watch the music videos. Mm -hmm. Go get the album. Yes. And get your merch. Yes. At michaelmore.com backslash music. Exactly. Yeah. So man, there it is. There it is, bro. I want to thank Michael, man, for coming in today. Y'all make sure y'all go cop that new album, Divergent. And like I said, the next four people to comment under my video will go to the concert free on me on the 29th in Anderson Mall. And make sure y'all show up. Make sure y'all are there. And you know I'm be in the building. And make sure y'all stay tuned. Make sure y'all like. Follow and subscribe, and I will see you next time. This has been Brave Views.